Well, good morning, Midtown. Thank you for joining us. Come on, let's stand up. Let's put our hands together. God is greater than any enemy you face right now. Come on. Well, I'm marching to battle, no doubt in my mind that my God is with me and victory is mine. I dance in the shadow of my enemy Cause God is my champion and He fights for me Yeah, God is my champion and He fights for me Yeah! Bigger the battle, greater my faith There is no giant you cannot say Cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies You're stronger than 10,000 Oh, oh, oh No weapon against me will prosper or stand Cause I got a promise from the Son of Man I'll throw off this armor and raise up my hands Cause I know my God and I know who I am Oh, I know my God and I know who I am Sing! The other battle, greater my faith There is no giant you cannot say Cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies You're stronger than 10,000 Bigger the battle Greater my faith There is no giant You cannot say Cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies You're stronger than 10,000 Oh, oh, oh We've been singing this song now a couple of weeks. The theme of it is, I'm not going to be afraid. God is greater. God is bigger. Come on, let's sing it out. I'm not afraid. Tell every giant, get out of my way. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid Tell every giant, get out my way I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid Tell every giant, get out my way Say, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid Tell every giant, get out my way I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid Tell every giant Get out my way, yeah! Bigger the battle, greater my faith There is no giant you cannot say Cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies You're stronger than 10,000 Bigger the battle, greater my faith There is no giant you cannot say Cause you're stronger than 10,000 armies you're stronger than 10,000 You're stronger than 10,000 armies You're stronger than 10,000 Ah, oh, that's a fun song, isn't it? All right, well, thank you for being here. Welcome to Midtown Church. My name is Josh. If I have not met you yet, if you're here for the first time, I want to say a special welcome to you and to let you know that everything we're going to do over the next few minutes is designed to help move you and the rest of us towards God's best together. Those of you joining us online, we're so glad that you are with us today. We're excited about the day and let you know what, how, how the rest of the morning is going to go. Just a minute, we're going to continue to worship God through music, and I want to encourage you to participate and take advantage of an opportunity to worship God through music with us today. And then we're going to hear a, a message from God's Word. We're going to continue our summer series called Summer Playlist. We're walking through Psalm chapter 16. And so we're excited that you're here. When you came in, you should have received a worship. God, if you did, let me see it. Hold it up. If you got words, if you got, you, yeah, raise your, yeah. Okay, maybe some of you need to go back out the double, grab Inside your worship, God, there's all kinds of things. There's places where you can take notes during the message. I want to bring your attention to the discussion questions that are in your worship, God, every Sunday. Those are there so that you can take the message with you this week and have some conversations with people in your life 
about what you heard in the message today, okay? There's also all kinds of upcoming things that you need to be aware of in your worship God. Also inside your worship God, there's a connection card. If you would, take that connection card out. That would be fantastic. And if you would, go ahead and start filling out the front of the connection card while we're doing this part here. If you're joining us online, you can get your worship guide downloaded on our website. You can also find your online connection card on our website as well. But fill out the information. There's some boxes there. Check the ones that apply to you. Okay, if you'd like to see, uh, receive some, occasionally receive some informational text messages, that's why we're asking for your mobile carrier. If you'd like to be part of that, go ahead and check that information. That next section is just some basic information about yourself. Uh, this information being updated is important, especially if you sign up for something on the back of the card a little bit later. And if you're a first-time guest with us, we want to send you something in the mail that we think that you'll like. So having that information uh, is helpful, and we promise to not share that with anybody. The next section involves your cell phone. So if you would, make sure that's on silent this morning. I hate for that to go off and to be uh, a distraction uh, during our time together. Since you have your phone out, if you're a social media person, go ahead and check in on Instagram, on, on Facebook, all of the things God speaks to you or something stands out to you in the worship or the message. Share that on social media. We say this every week because it's true. There's a lot of people that show up here for the first time because of what you post on social media. So thank you for being active on social media this morning. Last thing on the front of your card, how did you hear about us today? Whether it was maybe online or a friend invited you, write that person's name down. It's fun for us to make those connections, okay? If you would flip the card over on the back, we just asked for some information about you. Maybe you want some information about us, okay? Check the boxes there that you're interested in. We'll be sure to get you all the information that we can. If you'd like to serve God through serving some of our ministries here at Midtown and would like information about ways to serve, you can check the boxes there. Also, you see there the 4th of July celebration. We still need volunteers for the 4th of July celebration that we're having next Sunday, okay? And these are the options left. And we need to fill these spots so that that event is successful, okay? So just remember, next Sunday, do not show up here. Because that would be bad for you, because you'll be the only one here, okay? Do not show up here next Sunday. We're going to be meeting and celebrating the 4th on the new uh, church property on the corner of Boone and Alcoa. Information is in your worship guide, so please make a mental note or an actual note. Do not come here next Sunday, okay? Also, in your worship guide, there's information about our student camp legendary. Today is actually the last day to sign up for that. If you've got 6th through 12th graders, you need to sign your student up for camp legendary. If you have questions about that, reach out to our student ministries. Pastor Aaron, his information is in the worship guide. Last thing on your connection card. Let us know how we can pray for you, okay? Our pastors and prayer team look forward to that opportunity to pray for you. Each week we don't share your prayer requests. And if you're praising God for something in your life, let us know that so we can celebrate along with you. We'll cover the rest of, of, of this information on the card a little bit later. But here's what you do with this card. When you leave, there's going to be some ushers in the back of the room. Drop your connection card in one of those baskets unless you're a first-time guest with us. If that's you, we have a gift that we would like to give you on your way out today. So take your connection card out those double doors when you leave to that table where you picked up your worship guide. One of our volunteers will be there to give you a, get, a gift as you go. A couple last things in your worship guide. There's some offering envelopes. This one that says Midtown Church on it. This is what our regular tenders and members use to worship God by giving. And you guys are faithful to give to God through the local church here at Midtown. So we are grateful for that. If you're guests with us, we don't expect you to give unless something that you just want to do. The other envelope says Boone and Alcoa. Everything that goes in this envelope goes towards paying down the property for our future facility. If you're joining us online, you can click the Give tab of our website. You can give and worship God through giving there as well. When you leave, just drop these two envelopes. Even if you weren't prepared to give, drop these two envelopes in one of those baskets in the back of the room with our ushers. Okay, listen. We hope that you are excited to be here, and we're glad that you're here. And so, but here's what we want to do before we keep going. 
Let's pray together, okay? Let's pray some specific things. Uh, pray that God would bless our time together. Pray that God would bless as we give back to him a portion of what he's given us through offering. And pray that God would clear your mind and settle your heart for what he has for you today, okay? Let's pray together. God, we are, are as always, we're grateful for the morning, not just because it's Sunday, but because we have an opportunity and a privilege to collectively worship you together. Worship you through the music. We get to worship you by giving. We get to worship you by sitting under the teaching of your word. And so God, I pray that we would not just coast through and just sit through the next few minutes. But we would actively participate, make our minds and our hearts ready to hear from you today. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would stand up, let's keep worshiping together. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. There's another in the fire. All my dead left were dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore That's good news And should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world Cause I know and I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the water Holding back the seas and Should I ever need reminding What power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody now that power lives in me, there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, As the darkness bows to Him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between wears thin, I can feel the ground shake beneath us. As the prison walls cave in, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. Nothing stands between us, Lord. You're right here with me. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. Yes. 
He who was and who is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all these things unseen and this reckoning. And I know I will never be alone. I know. I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire. Standing next to me, there'll be, there'll be another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding, how good you've been to me? I've had the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I can see the light, well I can see the light in the darkness. As the darkness bows to Him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between wears thin, I can see the ground shake beneath us. As the prison walls cave in, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between. There'll be another in the fire. Should I ever need reminding How good you've been to me I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be make it easy to love you you are good and you are kind you bring joy into my life oh you make it easy to trust you you have never left my side you've been faithful every time all I want is you, Jesus. All I want is you. Come on, church, sing it out. You are the refuge I run to. You are the fire that leads me through the night. I'll follow you anywhere. There's a million reasons to trust you Nothing to fear for you are by my side I'll follow you anywhere Oh Jesus, you came to my rescue Thank you, Lord You took my place upon that cross you redeemed what I had lost. Now my whole world's revolving around you. Yes, it is. You're the center of my life. You're the treasure. You're the prize. Oh, all I want is you, Jesus. All I you anywhere 
There's a million reasons to trust you. Nothing to fear for you are by my side. I'll follow you anywhere. I'll follow you anywhere. Jesus, all I want is you. Oh, wherever you lead me, whatever it costs me, all I want is you. Jesus, all I want is you. Oh, you are the refuge I run to. You are the fire that leads me through the night. I'll follow you anywhere There's a million reasons to trust you Nothing to fear for you are by my side I'll follow you anywhere would you join me in prayer God we thank you for your guidance that is good and holy and true and trustworthy God I thank you for the attributes that you are good and that you are kind and that you bring joy into my life God that I would be those things to others God that I would show kindness and goodness and I would bring joy when I come in a room God, today, open our hearts to hear your word. Guide us through your word. Guide us by your Holy Spirit. And we pray this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Thank you, Carol. Worship team. Again, we are excited that you're here as we continue our message series, Summer Playlist, where we're taking a look at Psalm 16, sort of verse by verse, walking through Psalm chapter 16, and so just to give you a little bit of heads up, uh, Psalm, the book of, of, of Psalm, all of these Psalms that you see, and there's a bunch of them, uh, these Psalms are actually songs, okay? That's why we're calling it a summer playlist. You see the connection there, playlist, music, songs. These are actually songs, and so what, what's interesting about these songs, and we've noticed every week, if you've been here every week, that the songs actually have music to them, right? Typically, right? A song will actually have music to them. And so, so we, we started thinking back, what would it, if you ever thought to yourself, what would, this, what would Psalm 16 actually sound like? Have you ever thought to yourself what that, well, this will be unfortunate and disappointing. So what we've done is, <laughs> Because we know how curious you've been to think back, well, if these are songs, I wonder what the psalm song actually sounds like. Our worship team has done what I think is a fantastic job, uh, letting, giving us an insight every week on what these songs may have actually sounded like. And I have to say that so far, I think that they're probably on to something. Every, when, I, when I hear the songs that you guys play, I think, Tight. I think to myself, I guarantee you that's what David wrote, right? (laughs) Like the music behind? Spot on. Spot on. 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 That's what I was saying. It was spot on. And so 
I know you're eager to hear what specifically Psalm 16, 7, verse 7 and 8 would have sounded like when David wrote it, aren't you? We, we are too. Looking forward to, We're and so to what, is it, what, do you, what do you guys think that well, would have? Josh, you may have heard of Sting and the Police. Oh, yes, I have. I have heard of Well, we present to you today Taser and the Mall Cops. Oh, wow. We're going to take it down. We're going to take it slow. Here we go. Come on, feel the groove. Yeah. Every step I take, every move I make, every road I take, every turn I make, you'll be guiding me. No, can't you see who is guiding me in the night or day? Listen what you say Now the Lord's with me And I will never be Shaken because He is beside me He'll be guiding me Shaken Shaken because He is beside me He'll be guiding me yeah! God, you know, I kind of like, I kind of like the groovy, laid back. We're going to chill our way through Psalm sixteen, seven. Wasn't that good? Listen, that song did not sound like that when David wrote it, but it's fun to pretend. Here's what you do: if you have your Bible, I want you to take it out. Psalm chapter 16, if you don't have the Bible, this is going to be on the screen. If, you're, if you don't know where the book of Psalm is, go to the middle of your Bible and just kind of open it. And it's right there in the middle. Psalm chapter 16, and every week we have read this entire chapter together. So we're going to do that again. So kind of settle in for just a second. And we're going to read Psalm chapter 16 together. Are you ready? ready. All right. It says, keep me safe, O God, for I have come to you for refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my master. Every good thing I have comes from you. The godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. Troubles multiply for those who chase after other gods. I will not take part in their sacrifices of blood or even speak the names of their gods. Lord, you alone are my inheritance, my cup of blessing. You guard all that is mine. The land you have given me is a pleasant land. What a wonderful inheritance. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. Isn't that good? Ah, it sort of gives you a sort of a sigh of relief. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety, for you will not leave my soul among the dead. Or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Ah. Listen, I don't know about you, but whenever I read this chapter, and we've talked about this every week that we've, this chapter is often described as a chapter of satisfaction. And can't you sense that in David's words here? You can sense the fact that as he's working through this song, he gets to a point, really what we're going to begin talking about today and Doug referenced last week, he gets to a place where, to me, when I read it, I just get a sense that he's going, oh man, this is good. 
right? God, this a chapter, a song of satisfaction. Specifically, we're going to look at verses 7 and 8 together. And we're really going to get an idea of the satisfaction that David is talking about here. So let's look at that together. It says, I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night. I want you to think about that for just a second. Even at night. This is big. I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night. My heart. He instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. That should cause us to take a breath and go, oh man, that's good. God of the universe that flung the stars in place with his words. That holds the world in his hand. The God that is in control of all things is saying to David, I'm never going to leave you. I'm right here. Man, that is so good. All right, let me ask you a question. The answer to this question is going to cause some of you to have to uh, uh, take a bite of humble pie and to just kind of be honest with yourself, okay? And you're going to have to answer out loud. Maybe show of hands if you want to. How many of you would say that you are blue line dependent? Show hands. Why are y'all looking at each other all crazy? <laughs> How many of you would say, if you're honest with yourself, you're blue line dependent? Like, what in the world are you talking about? I never heard of this blue line dependent. Well, that's because I made it up. <laughs> Let me explain. And again, some of you, you're going to have to, especially you men in the room, you're going to have to be a little bit vulnerable. How many of you, whenever you travel, you don't know how to get where you're going, you put it in your map, in your phone, or in your car, and you follow that blue line until you get there? Some of you men are alligator arming it. You're like, okay, own it. You're blue line dependent. It's okay. I am almost 100% blue line dependent in my life. How you people of an older age? <laughs> Easy, George. And I'm in that category. This may have been before I was able to drive, but the, uh, how you people got from point A to point B in an area that you're not familiar with, with one of those paper maps, is beyond me. It doesn't matter if you can read. That map didn't tell you to get in the far left lane and prepare to merge. That map didn't tell you there's traffic ahead or there's a detour. Amen? Surprising if you are still alive right now. Before the blue line existed. So how many of you would say you're blue line dependent? Okay, I feel better about myself now. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Two examples, really quickly. My family went to Houston a few weeks ago to celebrate my oldest nephew graduating high school, okay? Now, I've been to my sister's house in Houston a bunch of times. But every time I text her and I say, what's your address? She's like, Josh, you've been here. I'm like, what's your address? If you want me to get there, give me your address. I put it in my thing, plug it into my car, and then she begins to talk to me. And I feel a sense of satisfaction, confidence, and rest. Somebody's guiding me to Houston, and I don't have to think about it. Someone's guiding me to Houston. I got to Houston, and then there's, then there's people that, that think through routes right? Like my dad thinks through different routes to get back in certain ways and avoid this and avoid that. And so we're getting ready to leave. And my dad's like, 
hey, uh, did you take a route such and such to get you kind of around this area and bypasses this? This time of day, there's going to be traffic and it should route you. And I was like, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and my sister's like, yeah, it's easy. You just, you get the, you just, you're going to go on this road. And, if, and I'm like, I don't know what the road outside of your driveway is called, <laughs> much less these other routes. It's like, it's easy. You just go, and you're going to go around. And, it's gonna be so, and I finally said, the two of y'all need to stop. I appreciate your efforts and your concern for me and my family. But if it doesn't show up on that blue line, <laughs> I'm not messing with it. I'll take a two-hour route longer than to guess my way around. And so we're putting the thing in, and they're like, well, where's the blue line? Why is it not giving you? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not in control of the blue line. I just put it, and I follow the blue line. And so we had to put, like, different, like, destinations halfway between there and here that finally showed up. And we finally got this route around. And it was a great new route. But there's no way I would have attempted that route without that blue line. Just a week or so ago, we were coming back from Florida for vacation. And we put the destination is home. I'm like, there's the blue line. And I'm not paying attention to the fact that this blue line on the way home is different than the blue line on the way there, right? And so I'm just following the blue line. And we're, we're getting through the tunnel. If you're familiar with going to, to flee, there's the tunnel. And then it was an exit that took us through downtown. And I'm like, downtown Mobile, I think. And, uh, and I was like, hmm. Look, I don't remember downtown on the way here, but all of a sudden we're in downtown, but I'm on the line. Okay, my line has not told me to reroute or to U-turn. Of course, Rachel, my wife's not paying any attention. She pays attention and looks up from her, her phone at the worst times. And so we, we get through downtown and we're going through this, this uh, neighborhood. And that's when she decides to look up. She's like, Josh? I'm like, yes, and I know what's coming. <laughs> Did we take a wrong turn? We get a text message from the family that we went with texting, uh, did you put in the ride? And so it all starts coming to me. And I said, I don't know. Could be lost. Don't, don't look familiar. None of this looks right. But I tell you what I'm doing. I'm following that blue line. And I'm just trusting to my heavenly father that that blue line is eventually going to get me to a place that I recognize hopefully home. She's like, okay. And sure enough, it did. At what point, Christians, at what point, those of you that are not Christians, those of you watching online, at what point are we going to surrender our life to not just being blue line dependent when we travel, but like David, being able to take a breath of satisfaction, rest, and confidence, knowing the God of the heavens that created you for a very specific purpose, that saved you for a very specific purpose, has a very specific plan for your life. And at what point are you going to take a deep breath and surrender to the blue line to get you where he created you to be? Now, if you're at a place where you don't feel confident and you can't rest in the direction that your life is headed. And you're not, you can't rest at night, as David says in these two verses. If you can't confidently bless and praise the Lord for guiding you. If you don't rest at night with the direction of your life. I want you to write this in your notes there at the very top. If I'm not satisfied with the direction of my life, I should stop. And ask. If you find yourself in a place of constant worry, dissatisfaction, restlessness about the direction of your life, and if you're in that place right now, I want you to listen very closely to this message. If you've been in that place before, but right now, you feel really good about where you are. I want you to tuck away what we're fixing to talk about for a later day. 
If you've never struggled with the direction of your life, I want you to tuck this away because at some point you might. There's three questions that you need to ask yourself. If you find yourself discontent, restless, and not satisfied with the direction of your life, and here's the first question. Where am I going? For me to get that blue line up on my phone, I had to type in a destination, right? Here's where I am. Here's where I'm going or I feel like I should be going. And then you have to hit go for it to actually show up on your phone. Now, here's the thing. When I ask this question, and remember, all of this is in the context of the direction of your life. David specifically is talking about the direction of his life in these verses because he says, I bless the Lord who guides me. Guides him through what? His life. And here's what you need to know about David. He's a very young king. And David's trying to figure out how to be king. And I guarantee you he has a lot of different avenues of guidance and direction coming into his life that he has to wade through and navigate through just like you do and just like I do. How to get through this life. It floods in what that's supposed to look like. But here's what David's very clear who he's blessing and praising here. He's blessing and praising his heavenly father for guiding him and nothing else. So the question we have to ask is where am I going? Now let me clarify This is not a surface level question. I don't want you to think about surface level. I don't want you to think about where am I going as it relates to is this the right job I should take? Or should should we make this move with our family? Or should I date this person? Or, Or what direction should I go when I'm picking a college? Or should I choose these friends in school? I'm not talking up. These are important things to navigate through, but I'm not talking about surface level earthly decisions that we make when I ask the question, where am I going? This question is a deep soul level question. Where am I going? This is a deep rooted at the core of who you are purpose question. This is a why am I created Why did God allow me to wake up today? Why am I living on this earth right now? Why in the span of history did God choose to create me and put me right here, right now? This is not a surface level question. This is a deep-rooted purpose question. And if you've never asked yourself this type of question, you need to start today asking yourself, why am I here? What am I doing here? Where am I going? Don't get me wrong. Having the right job is important. Making money to provide for your family and pay your bills. These are important things. Choosing the right friends are important things. These are not things that we should dismiss. I'm not asking you to dismiss these things. I'm asking you to think deeper than those things in this moment. Here's what Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 says. What do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? See, these are the kind of questions that we should be asking ourselves. Of all of the things that you pursue in your life, Climbing the corporate ladder, getting in the right school, having the right relationships. All of these things that aren't bad things. They're good things. But they're just surface level get you through life things. They're not secure your soul for eternity things. And what good is it if you get through your whole life and you make the right decisions, you get the promotion, you make the right move, You make the grades. You have healthy relationships. You gain the world. But you lose your soul forever. What good is it? 
If you gain the world, but you lose your soul. God's desire for all mankind is to be in right relationship with him through Jesus. The God who created you says in his word that to be right relation to be in right relationship with him we have to go through Jesus. So what does this mean? Here's what this means. That you get to a place where you understand that there's way more to this life than just you making the right choices and the right turns in life. There's way more to it. Because God created you for more. And it starts with a relationship with Him. And the only way you can be made right with your Creator is to surrender your life to His Son, Jesus. That's where the soul level, meaning of life, starts, according to the God of the Bible, that we believe and we trust. Here's what that looks like. You come into a place where you know that you're, you, you have sin in your life that separates you from God. And you know that there's more to this life than just waking up and going to work and going to school and then retiring one day. Surely there's more to life than that. There is. And it's a life in Jesus that makes all the surface level things make sense. And you surrender your life. You say to God, God, I believe that Jesus died for my sin. And I believe at the soul level that you raised him from the dead. I give my life to you. At that point, you begin to live a purpose that's bigger than yourself. And you have, begin to have the answer of where am I going? Those of you in the room watching online that you've already done that, you're in right relationship with God. Here's what's so good. You don't have to wonder about your purpose anymore. How good is that? That's awesome. Quit fretting, Christian, on why you're here. Quit fretting on what job to take. Quit fretting on the moot. Quit fretting Quit staying up at night, staring at the ceiling fan, going, what am I supposed to do, God? We don't have to wonder anymore. Look what Matthew 28 says. It says, Jesus came and told his disciples, and you are one of those Christians. You are who he's talking to here. You are who he's talking to here. He's not just talking to the disciples 2,000 years ago who were anxiously waiting on this Messiah and they're following all of their rules and they're memorizing the first few books of the Bible and they're good students of God's word and they're fishing and they're doing the things to provide and all of a sudden this Messiah that they've been anxiously waiting for shows up in the middle of their life and calls them out of their life to something new. Those of you right now that have gone from death to life spiritually, you have had the exact same experience as these disciples. And here's what he's telling them. I've been given authority, all authority in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I've given you. And be sure of this, I will always be with you, even to the end of the age. As Christians, you don't have to wonder what your purpose is anymore. Look up here at me for just a second. Christian. Your purpose is to live a life that brings glory to God and that makes disciples. So the job that you decide on, the relationships you decide on, the school you decide to go to, the way you behave at work, the choices that you make, the turns that you make in this life, you don't have to worry about those things. Is it important to be prayerful about them and do your best to do what you think God wants you to do? Absolutely. But listen to me. Rest in this. God's not as concerned with where you are as, as much as he is with who you are. Christian, you don't have to worry about it. Rest in the fact that your purpose is decided. And it's to make spiritual investments in the people around you. And to live a life that brings glory to God. Which leads to the second question that we have to ask ourselves if we're going to feel satisfied with the direction of our life. Not just where am I going, but how do I get there? 
Write that in your notes. How do I get there? To be satisfied in the direction of your life. To become blue line dependent. There's, there's a couple of really, a few really, 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 really important points under this point. I didn't put them in your notes, but you can take notes along the way. But there's a few things that we have to make a priority in our life. If we're going to be able to, like David, to rest in the direction that God is guiding us. There's a few things that if we would just do these things, it would be so helpful as we're navigating through this life. And here's the first thing. You can write this in if you want. Again, there's no blanks for it. But God's word has to be paramount in your life. God's word has to be paramount. And you word that however you want to word it. But God's word has to become important to us if we're going to be able to rest in God leading us and guiding us, just like David. We can't do that without God's word being in us. Here's what it says in Psalm 119, verse 105. It says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and to light my path. And here's what this means. Listen, we have our overall purpose given to us as Christ followers. That's to love God and love people. You love people through the process of making disciples. We know 30,000 feet where we're going. But how often do you find yourself um, wondering if the next step is the right step? Anybody? Okay, God, I know this, but what about just this next step? What about just this next, what about this conversation I'm going to be having in the next hour? With somebody I'm in conflict with. What about the deadline that's right around? What about the next step, God? I know the big people, but what about the next step? What does that verse say? Somebody read it to me again. Any class participation? (laughs) Does that not communicate next step? Or is it just me? It's, it's not a floodlight into the future, which we would like to have. It's a light right here for the next step. If you're wondering the next step, get in God's word. Because here's what you'll find. God's word is full of ways that you and I are supposed to live a life to bring him glory. God's word is full about what the motivation should be behind your next step. God's word is full about how we're supposed to treat people around us. God's word is full about how you're supposed to be a husband and a father. God's word is packed with how you're supposed to be a mother and a mom and a wife. God's word is packed full about how you as students are supposed to honor people around you, honor your father and your mother. God's word is packed full about how you're supposed to work. God's word is packed full about how to navigate the next step. But for some reason, we're going to continue to find ourselves lopping along in life, not having a clue when it's all right here, waiting to shine a light on your next step. If you want to be satisfied in your life and how to get to where we're going, God's word has to be a priority in our life. If you're willing to surrender your steps to the authority of God's word, it'll make your, your road so much simpler. Simpler. Is that a word? Maybe more simple? Anyways. God, so simple, y'all. Not easy, but simple. Not only is God's word important when it comes to being satisfied with the direction of your life, But the Holy Spirit has to be evident in your everyday life. We just talked about God's Word gets us there. The Spirit of God gets us there. John told his disciples in John chapter 16, this was an earth-shattering thing for them to come to terms with. And I'm going to blaze through this, okay? I'm running out of time. It says, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you asking, where am I going? Instead, you grieve because I'm leaving you. Jesus is leaving them. But in fact, the best thing is for me to go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I don't go, then 
then how am I going to send him? Well, who's the advocate? Two chapters before it says in verse 14 of John, it says, I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, and that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything that I've told you. Listen, for us to get where we're supposed to go, we have to, there has to be evidence in our life that the Spirit of God is leading us. It says here the Spirit of God is going to remind you of the things that you put in you being God's Word. The Spirit of God is here to help navigate and remind you of these things. And there's no better way for a telltale sign of, the, of you being led by the Spirit of God is how you treat people around you. Right? How you treat people around you. The Spirit of God is going to show up about the way you treat people around you. And listen, here's what's crazy. Here's the difference between us Christians and just regular nice people. There's a lot of really kind, nice, loving people in the world, right? The difference between me and you and me and they and them, you and them is you're nice for a different purpose now. You're not nice for nice sake. You're not kind for kind sake. You're not nice for for the, so so that you can say that I'm woke and accepting of people around me. You're not nice because culture says you should be nice. You're not nice because for nice sake. You're kind and loving and you treat people well because you're being led by the Spirit with the goal of pointing those people towards a relationship with Jesus. That's the difference between just a nice person and us Christians that are being kind and nice and treating people the way we should. If you're being led by the Spirit, these are things that are going to show up in your life. Which begs the question, what does it look like to point people to Jesus? Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. He says, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. And you may say, well, you know what? That sounds real arrogant, Paul. What do you mean follow me? Should you just follow Jesus? See, here's, what, here's the thing with Paul. Paul's not confident in himself. He's not, it's not, it's not saying follow me because I got it figured out. He's saying follow me because of who he's following. He's so confident and satisfied in his purpose, and he's being led by the Spirit of God, being full with the Word of God to help lead. He's so confident in his heavenly Father. He's so confident in who Jesus is. He's so confident that he's saying, hey, just follow me. Follow me while I'm following him. What does it look like for you to point people to Jesus? If you go, hey, follow me. I'm imperfect. I'm in, it's a progress. It's process here. I'm not perfect. But I'm so confident in who God is in my life that he's leading me, that I'm confident in who he is, so follow along. How bold would it be for you to do that? Which leads to the third thing. Third thing in your notes. Who is guiding me? And listen, I'm just going to say this. It's abundantly clear that King David is being led and guided by his heavenly father. You can see it in this chapter. He's so satisfied in his heavenly father. And I don't want to be redundant and say the same things over and over again. But if if God guiding you does not describe you... But you really want to experience, that this just sounds good. Let me just one last challenge from God's word here. In Romans chapter 12 verse 2 it says, listen, if you want to be satisfied in God guiding you, don't conform to the ways of this world. But let God transform you into a new person. Just the sigh of relief is coming in here. Change you to a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And if you're on the fence about whether or not you've got this thing licked and figured out and you don't really know that you need help from God, let me read this to you as a reminder in Isaiah 55. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. All the plans you think you've got for your life. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God is so much bigger than you, but he wants you to experience also so much bigger than yourself. So you can confidently surrender your life in the hands of your heavenly Father and rest in his infinite wisdom. But here's what's so cool about it. When you surrender, 
Yes, we surrender, but God wants us to be a part of it and play a part and participate. Here's what it says in Proverbs 16, 9. It says, we make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. As we make plans in this life, and we should, as we make plans that honor God, and we make plans with other people in mind, and we make plans with the fact that our purpose is to make disciples, God lets us make these plans, and then he goes, all right, now I'm going to guide you all the way through and never leave your side. If you want satisfaction in the direction of your life, Ask yourself those questions. Where am I going? What's your purpose? How am I getting there? What are you doing to navigate yourself to that purpose? And who's guiding you? Let's wrap this up by asking the question we ask every week, which is what? So what? Yeah, if you're new with us, you're watching online, we don't ask that so what question in an arrogant, disrespectful way. It's just a, you know, I hear you. I hear what God's word says. So what, and what am I supposed to do with this, well, let's start with our uh, so what verse for the week. That's Psalm chapter 16, verse 8. It says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me, which should cause us to breathe a sigh of relief and confidence and satisfaction that our God is with us always. And here's your so what for the week. Letting God guide me does not mean I take my hands off the wheel. Letting God guide me does not mean I take my hands off the wheel. You say, well, Josh, Carrie Underwood said, Jesus, take the wheel. What's the issue here? <laughs> as much as we like Carrie Underwood, she sings real pretty. Now, let me clarify this before we, get, before we wrap it up. Let me, let me clarify this. I know that there are things that only God can do. That it's best that we get out of the way. Only God and the Spirit of God can change somebody's heart in life. Only God can do things in, in your, there, there are things, in, don't get me wrong, there's things in your life that we need to get out of the way and let God do. But listen to me. Satisfaction in letting God guide you through your life does not mean you take your hands off the wheel. It doesn't mean you type your destination in, hit go, and then go in the back seat and watch Netflix the whole trip and check out. That's not what that means. There's a difference between passive surrender and active surrender. Passive surrender means this, and some of you, this may be you. You may have come to a place in your life where you, you, you believe to a certain degree that Jesus died for your sin, and you confess that to God, and you, ask, uh, you tell God, I believe Jesus died for me, and I believe he rose from the dead, and I give you my life. Uh, but what that was, was just you wanting to not go to hell when you die. And your life never changed after that moment. You said, God, I want, you, I want to surrender my life to you. But then you just kept living your life however you want to. You never pursued the things of God. You never, you never pursued the right desires to please God in your life. You never made a spiritual impact on anything or anybody, yourself included. You may have prayed a prayer, but then you prayed a prayer, you typed your destination in, and you got in the back seat and kept watching Netflix. You prayed a prayer, and then you just kept living your life however you want. That's passive surrender. That's not a description of somebody that's saved. Listen to me. That's a description of somebody that's deceived. That's passive surrender. Active surrender is somebody who acknowledges their need for Jesus, confesses and believes in their, in their soul that Jesus died for them and that God raised them from the dead. And from that moment on, they begin to submit themselves to the things of God over a lifetime. Imperfect, messing up, but pursuing the things of God, God's word. Pursuing making a spiritual impact. Imperfect, yes. Missing the, missing the mark, yes. All the things. But there's something in you that's moving you towards these things. And you lean in and you activate yourself. You pick up your Bible. You, you intentionally have spiritual. That's, that's active submission. It's not taking your hands off the wheel. It's understanding God has a purpose for you. And you actively pursuing 
those things in your life. That's what it means by don't take your hand off the wheel and check out. Here's what I want you to do. Get your connection card out real quick and flip it over on the back. You're going to see there a personal so what section. And that personal so what is just a way for you to commit to God and communicate with us what you're going to do with what you heard today. Okay, we don't share this with anybody. We're going to commit to praying with you as you live this out. Here's what it says. This week I will become blue line dependent by what? What ways did you hear in God's word that you're going to begin applying to your life to put yourself under the authority of God's word? That you're going to let the Spirit of God guide you, and that you're going to begin to make spiritual investments in people around you. You're going to be actively surrendered to God, letting Him guide you. What ways are you going to live out what you heard today? And we're going to commit to praying with you and for you. If you want to memorize our verse for the week, check that box and let us know that you're going to do that. And maybe you asked Jesus into your life for the very first time today or made one of these spiritual decisions you see on your connection card. Check the boxes that apply to you so that one of our pastors can follow up with you this week. Those of you watching online, I want to encourage you to do the same thing. Well, let's pray together and ask God to help us through all this. God, we're grateful for your word. And I pray that as Christ followers, we would submit ourselves to you. Not just by word, but through action. And God, I pray for those in the room that that aren't in right relationship with you. Can't say that they've experienced a free gift of salvation through Jesus. I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you would draw them to you. They would surrender their life to you. God, thank you for your word who guides our next step. Thank you for the Spirit of God who guides us and reminds us of the things that you have for us in our life. Use us this week. Maybe we we be satisfied and rest in life because you are our God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to ask our volunteers to quickly make your way to your places if you don't mind. Don't forget, as you leave, drop your two offering envelopes and your connection card in one of those baskets in the back of the room. Also, at the bottom of the connection card, you can check that you're going to attend next week's 4th of July celebration. First time guests, don't forget we have a gift for you. So take your connection card to the worship God table and get your gift as you go. Okay, listen, glad y'all were here. You're dis-